All right, I'm up on the diamond spur track, and I told you about the pans it would have on. There's some laying up there, but you can't see them from here. It would collect all the oil and the rain that had oil in it, and it would bring it down here and drip it through the ground right there. I don't know how well you can see that. A grate with the rocks on it, right there. But anyway, and there's a manhole cover there. So I assume this would be pumped up to that tank that's up there. You can barely see it, it's up in here. But, uh, anyway, I just now discovered that all that was built back in the 80s or the 90s. 11 to 9 years I was staying down in Florida or living in Florida so they changed they went from the Seaboard Coastline Railroad the Seaboard System Family Line System and stuff yeah I think I came out back during the Seaboard System and but you still have Family Line System locomotives painted up and stuff so uh I was along about that time. So I came back. They were CSX. Let me see. I think I've seen them from Seaboard Coastline to Family Line System. I missed the Seaboard System. Yeah, now I got my brain straight. And, I, and that must be the tank right there where they were putting all the dirty oil that they would pump out of the ground down there. But from what I understand, they never ever used this. This was all set up so they could build a fuel facility up here to load them up. But their biggest problem was most of the time Diamond Spur would be an occupied track that had five or six locomotives on it. And you'd have to start moving all those locomotives around to bring yours in so you could fuel it up. And it wasn't like a locomotive couldn't leave Atlanta and make it to Hamlet. So this wasn't a, too much of a occurrence as to stop in Abbeville and pick you up a locomotive because your locomotive ran out of fuel there's the pans down there i was talking about they had across the track they would collect the oil and stuff like that all right let me see what we got that's an ambulance down there it sounds like a fire truck blowing a horn that one doesn't have a horn like that i don't think all right, thank y'all. All right, that was your fuel nozzle there. And I haven't played with it, so I don't know anything about it or whatever, but I thought they would have had a hose because this was set up for diesel. It looks like they tried, got set up like for water to fill a tender up or whatever. They built this concrete pad out here and they put this up. I guess this is a handle here. Open and close it. And that's all chained up still. I don't know how they would have got it on this side of the pipe to get it to swing out. So they got it on the wrong side. Oh, it can turn. So the chain wasn't on it, you just swing that around and you could take it out, but I can't believe they were using that. They, and they should have had a hose on there or something to fuel up these diesels. I mean, good gracious. That's crazy. All uh, right, we actually got some pans sitting down there 
in the correct position. Uh, you can see where the rail would have gone through right through there. And you would have had a rail over there and there's still some metal work over there. It's kind of bent up. It would cover that outside that rail like these two right here. And see, so they got lifts at the bottom. They would have caught the oil and it would have been carried, carried on down that way. So it got down to that drain and it would have drained out, y'all. And no oil would have been getting on the ground. And you don't see any stains anywhere where any did. But like I said, they would pile up locomotives in here because Abbeville had a yard that needed a locomotive for trains leaving out of Abbeville yard. And, uh, And the, the switch engines that would be here, you know, so you usually have about four or five locomotives sitting there. All right. That's the oil tank. It looks like a tank car almost set up, but I don't know whether it is or not. I haven't seen anything to say, hey, look at me. I'm a tank car. But anyway, they got a bunch of concrete pits around here and stuff, have wooden decks. I got the staircase going up and stuff, but I don't know where the controls are. I got a control panel over here on the other side of this metal panel. Looks like an electrical box. And it's got conduit coming out the bottom, so I assume that went to the motor to do any pumping they had to do. And it would have pumped it over to the pipe over there so they can load the locomotive up. All right, well, we still got a clear signal here. This one taking its time. I mean, if you watch my videos and I'm standing at the north end looking south, and we got one coming out of Greenwood. Greenwood's 13 miles away. When he clears that signal up over there for them to go, that gives us a green signal. And it takes them about 15 minutes to get here from Greenwood. So that's real quick. But this, when he gets a clear signal, he could be clearing it up halfway through Georgia. You know, all the mainline signals just lighting up, lighting up, lighting up, lighting up for him. All the way to Abbeville, all the way to Greenwood. So, you know, he could be an hour or two hours away. There's no telling how far along he is. Did he get... You know, was he sitting in the side and then counting falls? That's 13 miles away, and he got a clear signal come out and it cleared up to here. Or was he in the side and over in Elberton, and he got a clear signal which cleared all the way through here? Or was he down in Athens when he got the clear signal and it cleared up all the way through Abbeville and stuff? I don't know. But anyway, I know it takes time for these... Uh, northbounders to come out of Georgia and stuff. All right, thank y'all. All right, I try to get some close-up of those purple flowers or leaves or whatever they are. I can't get close enough to tell. They're so high up in the tree. If I walk over there, I'll still be 80 feet down beneath them. All right, and I hear the train horn blowing. I don't know if you could. It is kind of a noisy day. So, uh, I'll get pictures when it gets closer. I have been doing a lot of work on the rail up here. Hey, I can't see it on the camera to tell exactly where it is. Not down that far, I don't think. Right there. Welded track. And they come down right here and they got welded rail. Got the date on it and stuff. And they came down here and they put in two joints and added a rail so 
Man, a lot of work in this area. <laughs> All right, is that Red Street? Which means he's just about a mile from the station. <coughs> and I'm guessing that corner's about well over a quarter mile less than a half a mile away. Ah, uh, he's coming down the hill. I don't hear him. Somebody on the track, I guess. Or he's waving at somebody, I don't know. I'm hearing them, they're in dynamic brake coming down the hill. There you go, guys. Two engines, it looks like. It's either the grainer or it's a manifest brake. But he's flying on to y'all. All right, I'm going to back away. He's saying hey to us. Thank you. This is a quick train, a fast one too here. Alright, so this one's coming up behind him. There shouldn't be any trains for a while. He's going to have Greenwood blocked up for a little bit, so nothing's coming out of Greenwood. I mean, it could be something sitting there ready to go, but it's 13 minutes over, 13 minutes back. It's going to be a little bit of time. Alright, thank y'all. Alright. I think this was called hibiscus, I'm not sure. That just comes to mind. That's what it looks like. It's hanging off that tree on a vine. Or it's part of that tree, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. All right.
These are the closest ones. And they're just about down to the ground where I can touch them if I want to go run around in the mud. I right, thank you. And you see the switch points are over towards me. That lines this switch up for the side. I didn't notice. He came down to on the main line. And I haven't seen any clear signals, but we must got a signal changing up here to get this one. Must be going to have one come out green wouldn't go over here. I don't know. Thank you. So we got a red over yellow over red. This is a medium approach, and he's going in the side. That other train hadn't even made it to Greenwood yet, and he's already got signals out here changing behind him. All right, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm down at the depot, and I got a southbounder coming at me. He's coming south on the main line from Greenwood, actually from Monroe, North Carolina. And I've been thinking about, well, maybe not for this one. Uh, hold on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I heard him. I don't know what crossing he's at because he's out in the woods. There's one at the bottom of the hill. And then there's one about four miles beyond that. Called Secession, or maybe about four miles from me, about three miles from that crossing. Okay, I see headlights, so he's coming up around the corner now. Let me zoom y'all in a little bit. Looks like it's an auto rack train, from what I could tell. I assume this is the one out of Casey, South Carolina. He's fixing to be going over Highway 72 Bridge down there. And be coming in, going in the side, and we'll see if they change signals here on the main line. Because if he's going in the side and then he's auto racks, he's probably going in to tie down, so he'll be blocking it up. But that's going to be allowing the train to come through on the main line. So let's see what happens to him. Because usually they tie these auto racks down. They just bring them over and put them on the track and tie them down. Alright, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and that takes a while to shake out. I still have to edit this and stuff. But yeah, he's stepping away from me. I don't have to step away from him. Alright. Basically, they don't want you no closer than 35 foot from a train. And then it depends on the speed of it and stuff like that. I hear him ringing the bell. He turned the bell on. Thank you. Two, four, five, seven. ETA, ES, 40, ET, 5, 2, O, 7. All right, that y'all. These are empties. I tell you this every time I see the train, the same train. These are empties going back to Ohio. We might have some new viewers, so you know, that's why I got to keep repeating myself. These are empty auto racks that go to Ohio. They're coming out of Casey, South Carolina. This is a northbound train, but it's actually going south right now. Alright, he's slowing up. Getting close to Red Street or something. He's going to be stopping. 
He hadn't put the brakes on that. He just let off the throttle a little bit. Maybe it's slowing down because we could read this thing. CSX on the hourglass one. That's the first one I've seen. That's new, new graffiti. Can't read none of that. Tab, T A B. Flat spots on there. Somebody left the handbrakes on or air brakes on while they push the shove to pull that car. Push the pull, I should have said. I didn't need to say shove. That was kind of cute, OHLA, I don't know what that is. Oh, that was about the time that in the U.S. I don't know, it does add some excitement to the cars. And they all stand out of the way of the letters. They are respecting that. Yeah. Even going around the reflectors and everything. I think that's cool. Yeah. I can see, say, leave them alone. Don't bother them or whatever. B-O-U-R. Lawyer. Nancy. New Union Pacific one. Sound like it's got flat spot on its wheel. Got blue EOT. So I assume this one's rolling in and that's why he got red signal. He's not going out. It's not because there's another train sitting down there waiting to come in. Because that train would be on a green signal all the way coming in here. And this one wouldn't have stopped it. It still could have come in here. But I don't think there's one out there. Not close to be a problem with him. Uh, he's either pulling up to Red Street or someplace close to Red Street so the taxi can pick him up. I haven't heard him blow the horn at Red Street, but that train sure looked long enough to reach Red Street. I mean, they used to pull down to the south end, but they're doing some construction work down there, and they can't get on the property to get on the trains, and they don't remove that stop anyway. They had a big steel staircase, you know, to come down the embankment to get down by the railroad tracks, but... Even that's gone now. All right. That used to be one of my favorite places to sit there. Oh, he's blowing that red street now, so. But he's pulling up and stopping. I don't know why he's blowing. I guess just to let me know where he is. And EOT is flashing. Does that mean because he's got the brakes on? Because there's bright sunshine. It's not early in the day. He put it on brakes. That makes the EOT come on, I guess. I heard someone say that one time, but I had to figure it out myself, and I'm still not sure. So they quit working now. All right. All right, thank you. All right, I'm looking at red signals northbound. There's nothing coming up from behind me. So that's the end of this video. All right, thank y'all. God bless y'all. I hear a train blowing its horn at Red Street. It'll all be here pretty soon. I hope he comes by, I'll catch him. I hope that they don't tie him down. We got auto rack still sitting down there. Last time I checked. I don't know, it might be him heading out, I don't know. Alright, update. The northbounder stopped 
The auto racks are still there. I can't tell what's on the north boundary. He just kind of cut off his headlights and stuff, so I'm going to have to walk down. I'm probably not going to be able to. I'm still visiting with Kurt. I got to visit with him for a little bit, but if they're still sitting there, I'll stop and catch them. All right, thank you. I hope I'm close enough y'all can read it, that Spirit of Brandon. I don't know who that is, but somebody wrote that on there. Alright, thank y'all. They just tap it, stuff. Huh? I'm doing no goddamn eating no more. I don't think they said that, that I didn't want to be. I don't want trouble that day. Get on, headed out, brother. You need to ride down there. Never did record shit there. All right, we got one pulling in. We probably can't, isn't going to pull into the yard. But, uh, because that uh, southbound auto rack is still sitting in the siding. And we got the northbound auto rack sitting on the main line. So I was still here and pulling this stuff. This one has like a fiction crank up. It's losing air, so it's got to resupply the air. All right, thank y'all. Oh, and I hope you enjoyed the cab view. I hope it comes out. I haven't looked at it. I got the engineer to take my camera in the cab and take pictures and stuff, or take video from up there. All right, thank y'all. He's still pulling. He hasn't stopped yet. So he might even come in the side and then pull up behind this train. I don't know. Sometimes they sit out there and they wait on a cliff signal. They let this auto rack pull out. It's in the side. Yeah, he's stopping. <coughs> auto rack in the side will pull out and get a couple of blocks away and they give him a clear signal and then he just lets it roll. Alright, thank y'all. Alright, she's getting ready to crank up. Automatic startup. <coughs> <coughs> Just cranking the engines to run the compressors to get the air back up to maintain the brake. It will add air to the train line, but it's such a little mount that it doesn't release the brakes. <coughs> She crunk up. Go ahead the air compressor in a little bit. I'm going to cross over. I can get that auto rack train pulling out. Well, see, that moved yet. I haven't heard anything or seen anything about a moving. Taxi for these guys just showed up. My baby one dropped off the taxi for them, and then come down here and pick these guys up. 
Beer uh, brand. So thirty one twenty six, Beer of brand. Still sitting down there. Have a good day. All right, thank you. Never crew going home without their train. Somebody else is going to come get this train. I think those yellow marks on the rails I mean that's where you're supposed to stop at behind them I mean behind in that direction when you go stop here waiting for a signal or whatever you don't go past that because the tracks get skinnier up there and they don't want you in the skinny part all this stuff you bump into or whatever alright thank y'all we're still dealing with the auto rack sitting there. They haven't moved yet. I'll get them in a little bit. All right, thank y'all. All right, the auto racks are pulling out. And this other train behind me is cranking up, pulling in. That's what got me to looking at them. Uh, they're going around the corner, they're heading south to Atlanta, then up to Ohio. This train on the right just came out of Ohio. It's loaded. Alright. There's our locomotive. He's got his headlight on. <coughs> He's pulling, he'll be coming in the corner around here a little bit. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, but I need a drink. My throat's dry. <coughs> <coughs> something. Nose is running or something, I guess. All right, I'm going to zoom this out to help cut the shake out a lot. He's going to go to the switch and pull over to my right, your right on the camera. Coming down the side.
Look like a manifest freight to me. Doesn't look like it's struggling too hard to pull it. See how many horsepower we got. Nine ninety seven on the lead locomotive. They say hello to us, friendly engineer. That's the ES forty four AA. Conductors waving at us. probably going to take it easy if he came in under approach signal. No, he probably came in under restricted. That means he can't go over 10 miles an hour because he came into an occupied track and the only signal gives allows him to do that is a restricted signal. If you want to see one, watch some of my videos. I got them in there you know, every now and then quite often lately. Burlington Northern. I wonder what they carry in those. They're empty. They got to go back and be filled up again. That first one down there has a cave, bearing cage rattling on it. Got some steel here that says this train goes to Alabama to me. Carrying all that steel down there. Look how thick that is. Looks like four inch thick steel on top probably an inch and a half or something on the bottom. That's lumber, western forest lot, premium western red cedar. Wow. All right, that's a loaded car. 1040, frozen flammable gas. Let me see, the skull and crossbones means it's poisonous, I think. All right, so many those are closed up there. These are like for cement, they're empty. Little two bay cover hoppers, it could be cement, could be a clay or something. They try to keep it dry. Bulkhead flat car, empty. Some more tank cars, they're empty. 2789, that's a corrosive. How's that? EQ. Uh. Alright, that's a load cover hopper. It's got some sort of plastic or something in it. That might be coming out of like New Jersey or something. Tank car people, liquid fire petroleum gas, 1075. But it doesn't weigh it down much. I assume these are loaded, but they're not, it's not heavy. Liquefied petroleum gas, non-odorized. 
I don't see any clouds coming out of it. Grainers, these are empty. Going out west to get that corn, that wheat, whatever they put in it. These are empty. Going back to be filled up. No packers on, so I don't know what they're carrying. They're all new, got new bags, new trucks on. Flat spot on the wheel. There are three of them flat spots on the wheel coming down through here. Uh, these are both the tankers, but no placards on them. I don't know, they're both down with one or what? Center pros, center pros. Got that piping on the bottom, they all suck out of one discharge. Feed trading, I don't know what that is. Baby. Page mile. I was loaded one, that one's loaded, but that's like plastic and stuff. That one's loaded too, plastic and stuff. Tank cars, empty, 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 empty. empty. Well, Lake Carey has a hydrogen blanket, causing hydrogen blanket do not enter. All right, flat spots on one end of those. Plastic. So they got pipes, they hook up to them and they suck these cars dry, or empty or whatever. All right, molten sulfur cars, these are empty and no placards on them. 2448 is what it would be. Hot molten sulfur. Bottom end, coming up. Got yellow EOT in the train device on there. All right, so that's the end of our train activity for now. We got one on the main line tied down. We had one on the side and tied down, but it went south. And this one pulled in behind it, and he set it out south. All right, so that's what's up with our trains in Abbeville today. All right, thank y'all. I'm going to watch it. So it goes around the corner. Let me see something. Let me get it over here. Did I take the shake out of it? A little bit anyway. It's going uphill. Going around the corner around the railroad yard. What used to be a railroad yard. Railroad yard and a roundhouse. And it's all gone now. We're left with three tracks left in Abbeville. The main line, the siding, and yard track number one. All right, thank y'all. All right. Out there is a graveyard for black people, colored people. There are some slaves buried out there. And this grave has got World War II soldiers in them. So that's how long this graveyard's been in use. And for a long time it was neglected. All covered up in weeds and you couldn't see it. Uh, then I guess they quit using it. And you know, people quit taking care of it, but now people are coming out here taking care of this place. 
All right. Thank y'all. Look, I've been peeking in these auto racks. You got big pickup trucks in there and pickup trucks with no beds on them with duallys on the back. And I got one I can see it has 6.7 liter turbo diesel on it. They're all painted white. So I guess they get a paint job when they get to where they're going if they change colors. But that's three cars worth right now. That's pretty interesting, pretty exciting. All right. So these are double stack cars. So they got pickup trucks on the bottom, pickup trucks on the top. They can only carry two levels of automobiles in there. All right, thank you.